The Australian government was going to list Iran's Revolutionary Guard as a terror group, as the US, Saudi Arabia and Bahrain already have. The guards, who are the most powerful wing of Iran's state security apparatus, have been responsible for using horrific tactics, including sexual violence, to combat peaceful women's freedom protesters. And they've plotted to kill foreign citizens. And yet Australia changed its mind about its definition as a terrorist group, according to bombshell new documents. Senior reporter Caroline Marcus broke this story for Sky News and she joins us now. Uh, a joint response, Caro, from the Jewish and Iranian communities in Australia was released in response to your article. Firstly, tell me what you found out and what the reaction has been. Well, Rita, these bombshell documents came about as a result of a freedom of information request that was lodged by a member of the Iranian-Australian community living here in Sydney. Now, he challenged the government to provide the documents of which it had relied upon in order to make its determination that it couldn't list the uh, IRGC, as they're known, the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps in Iran, as a terror group. The government had said back in January last year that they considered these guards uh, an organ of a nation state and therefore they wouldn't be able to list them under the criminal code. So this member of the Iranian community, his name is Arash Begu, he has given us the documents that he received in reply to his freedom of information request while the Attorney General's department refused him access to the documents that they'd relied upon, it was a schedule of eight documents that they had found uh, fell in the scope of his request that actually revealed a lot more than perhaps they'd been intending to. Uh, in particular, these two documents called a statement of reasons and a nomination form. Now, these two documents are essential when the government is uh, looking at listing a terror group according to the protocol of listing a group under the criminal code. You have to have have these two documents. So the fact that they had those documents, which were dated uh, mid-January last year, meant, according to the opposition, that they were significantly advanced in their listing of the IRGC as a terror group. But somehow, within the space of less than three weeks, they did a complete backflip and decided that, no, they're not going to list it. Instead, they came up with this legislative reason that it's a, an organ of a nation state as to why they couldn't. Now, we know, as you mentioned, that the US, uh, they designated the IRGC as a terror group back in 2019. And last year, they actually called on their allies and Australia being one of them to follow suit and, and highlighted the urgency of doing so. The opposition has called for a long time and in particular, the Assistant Shadow Minister for Foreign Affairs, Claire Chandler, has been pushing for the government to list this group as a terror group ever since she chaired a committee in the wake of these violent crackdowns on the uprisings in Iran that you'll re well remember, Rita, that followed the death of Masa Amini, that 22-year-old woman who was arrested by the morality police for not wearing her hijab properly, allegedly, and then she died in police custody. Now, mm. after that, they uh, this, this committee released uh, 12 recommendations, the main one being that this group should be listed as a terror organisation. In the past couple of years, we've seen them wreak absolute havoc, especially across the Middle East. Uh, of course, Iran is the world's leading state sponsor for terrorism. Its proxies include Hamas in Gaza, which there have been reports showing that they helped train Hamas militants ahead of the October 7 attacks on Israel, also provide $10 million we, dollars in aid, uh, $10 million in weaponry. Uh, oh, it, it, we know Iran is an axis of evil country and it funds uh, terrorism in many parts of the world and we need some answers to why there was this U-turn on, on, on this decision. If they were advanced and they were about to announce this and then they've backtracked, uh, I know you're the... You're exactly the investigative journalist to get to the bottom of it. Caroline Marcus, thank you so much for your time.